Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have an almost three and a half year old named Kylie and I have a 17 month old named Mia. So today's video is going to be a little bit more informal than the ones that I normally create for you guys. Typically I'm not filming in front of a storage closet, but because of the content of today's video, I thought this might be a good place to do it. And the other reason being that my normal filming area is completely under construction right now. I'm creating this video because after I posted last week's video, which was my very first Montessori preschool homeschool oriented video, where I showed how I'm planning for my daughter's unit study and exactly how I was storing all of the materials. I had a lot of requests to see exactly what was inside all of the storage bins. And I was a little bit hesitant initially to actually film what was inside all of the boxes because I don't want anyone to feel like they need to have the things that we have in our storage closet in order to do Montessori or Montessori homeschool properly because that is just not the case. And also I think when a lot of people see just the sheer variety of materials on a video like this, they feel pressured like, oh, there's no way that I can do this. It's just so much. It's a little bit overwhelming. And I don't want to create that feeling for anyone. So I do want to put out a little disclaimer. The materials that I'm going to show you, I have been slowly collecting for the last three and a half, almost four years at this point. And not all of them were purchased by me. Many of them were gifted to us from family and friends and other places. Um, and then some of them we got secondhand, we inherited from other people that we know. And it's just been a slow process of getting all of these things together. So if you are new to Montessori or Montessori homeschooling, again, I don't want to place pressure on anyone. I am just sharing the materials that we have because so many of you guys were interested to see and maybe it will be able to give you a lot of really good ideas for things that you can set up on the shelves at home for your child um, but they are literally just that ideas no one needs to have any set number or type of materials in order to do Montessori like you could literally implement Montessori very successfully at home with no materials and no budget whatsoever as long as you are incorporating your child into practical life activities and respecting their space and their focus and their concentration on the activities that they are choosing to do throughout their day, then as far as I'm concerned, you're doing Montessori properly. But with that said, if you are looking for some ideas and you were kind of hoping to find a little bit of inspiration, then I'm hoping that giving you guys a peek into some of the things that are in our boxes for the various learning areas might help you out with that. I will do my best to put links to as many of the items that I can find that are in the boxes that were not DIY'd. I will try to find links to as many of those as I can and put them all into my Amazon storefront, which I have linked in the description box down below. So from one busy parent to another, today I'd like to take you on a little tour of exactly what is in all of our storage bins, for Montessori materials covering a variety of ages from newborn all the way up to the beginning of preschool. Right, so really quickly before we dive into the contents of the boxes, I just wanted to draw your attention to the different category labels that I have on all of the boxes, which kind of helps me decide where to store a certain material. And right now it's a combination really between uh, materials that would be for a younger child, say for like zero to two, two and a half years old. Those kinds of things are in my infant toddler materials box. And then some of them are also in my hand-eye coordination box. And then the other remaining boxes are all kind of set up like a Montessori preschool classroom might look as far as like the different subject areas that are offered. So I've got one for music, I've got one for sensorial, practical life, language, math, arts and crafts materials, science, culture, geography. And then I have just a generic catch-all box for all of our puzzles because even though they could fit into some of the other boxes very easily according to whatever the puzzle is about, they just take up so much space. So I decided to create just one puzzle box to hold all of those there. This way I could kind of free up space in some of the other boxes. All right, so in the music box, I just have a small collection of various instruments that we've picked up over the last couple of years. You can see there's like a xylophone, a triangle, some cymbals, a couple of wooden percussion instruments, a few DIY shakers that I made myself just by putting like beans and rice inside of them and hot gluing it shut, a little music box. 
and then also a set of the Safari LTD musical instruments, um, as well as a little set of matching cards that I made to go with them for language learning and matching activities. And that's basically it for our music bin right now. In the arts and crafts box, we've got a Buddha board for some water painting. I've got a few activities in here that are bagged up, like some things that came in Kylie's KiwiCo kit, a big and small matching painting printable that I found online for free. Um, I actually have the yoga cards in here because I didn't know where else to put those. Some paint brushes and a bunch of temper paints. Um, some of Kylie's clay art projects that she didn't want to part with. Some popsicle sticks, some materials for a gluing activity, uh, some styrofoam stamps and ink pads, some extra shaving cream and saline solution for making slime, some rubber cement, and extra wooden teething rings that I thought I might save in case we needed them for something art related. A little bag of pom poms. There's confetti all the way down in this corner right here. Construction paper. I think I see a spare pair of uh, safety scissors in here. And then I've got a couple of these magic water painting mats that you see all over Amazon that were gifted to the girls that Kylie's kind of lost interest in at this point, but I'm saving for Mia as she becomes a little bit more interested in arts and crafts stuff. All right, in the hand-eye coordination box, again, some of these materials could likely be placed in say like the practical life box, but I don't know, I just felt like they were maybe for a younger audience or they didn't have an express direct correlation to something practical life. So I just decided to put it in here. And again, a lot of these are used for children under the age of two, although they could be used for older children as well. So I don't know, I might actually eventually do away with this box entirely as Mia gets a little bit older. But for now, I just decided to keep it because it was a good little extra box uh, to have a place to put things that were very hand-eye focused. For example, like this little button art activity that Kylie received for her birthday and they both love playing with this thing. I also have a little memory game that came in one of Kylie's KiwiCo sets where she has to put these little tokens inside these little slots. One of those little peg games that you see on the tabletops of restaurants. A little dollar store magna doodle. This is a bag for holding lacing beads a little threading cheese. This is a geo board and these are all the rubber bands that go with it. And this is actually a really good sensorial math material, um, but Kylie is not ready for actually trying to make shapes with the rubber bands quite yet. So I don't have it in that box and it's been stored in hand-eye coordination. But once we start using a geo board for geometry, then I plan to move it over to that box. This is just a little box that I got from Michael's that has this little sliding lock mechanism. It's just a cool place to hide little trinkets and encourage them to learn that fine motor skill of opening and closing a lock. This is the stacking pegboard set. It's got all the little pegs inside of it that are all different colors and they go in this little foam stacking board. Both the girls love this activity, even still today. This is a little hedgehog shaped, you can't see it because of the yarn, but it's like a hedgehog shaped wooden sewing card that comes with a little plastic um, sewing needle right there. And I saved this for Kylie because when I tried to introduce it to her, she was definitely not ready for it yet. And actually now that I'm thinking about it, this should be in the practical life bin. So I'm gonna move this. I didn't even know that it was in here because it was all the way at the bottom, but this would be kind of like a beginning sewing activity. A little baggie of some wooden dowels and straw pieces where you just put the sticks inside of a little thing of Play-Doh and then they can thread the little straw pieces onto the sticks. And I don't even know what's in here to be honest. This is just like a little pencil pouch. I picked up at the dollar store forever ago. Oh, it's got a lock and key activity inside of it. So just a single lock and a single, a single key. So these are the language materials and I have not put this box in here yet because I just got this. I have not introduced it to Kylie yet and I probably won't for a little while still, but this is a Montessori movable alphabet. So this is a tool that is used to teach writing in a Montessori preschool classroom. And it's literally just a little box that has compartments containing all of the different little letters of the alphabet in wooden form. And the way it works without going into too much detail in cases you've never seen one before. Um, and again, this is for preschool age is the children learn how to write their own words, basically using each of the different individual letters and going off of the phonetic sound of each letter. So you can introduce 
introduce them at the very beginning stages to simple words like pig. And so they can work to figure out the p, p sound and they can do p. And then they can look for the i, i, i sound and they can find the, the i. And then they can look for the, where is it? There it is, the g sound and then they can spell pig all by themselves. And so this is actually how children in a Montessori classroom learn to write before they ever even learn how to read. And I just think it is so beautiful and I am so excited to introduce this to Kylie. She's not quite ready yet, but she's almost there. So I went ahead and ordered it so that I have it on hand, ready to go when she is. But the materials we've been working with up to this point are in here. I've got one of these little, letter things that have mostly, I think for except for one or two of them, there's mostly phonetic pictures on the back, like k, and then it's got a little key on the back. So this is kind of fun, and Mia just likes to do this with it right now. <laughs> but it is kind of fun to talk about different letters and sounds. This is a set of metal insects, although the version that I have, they're actually made of plastic. It's a little bit more of an inexpensive option that I found on Amazon, but I've heard really good things about them and that they work really well. Um, so metal insects for helping with learning writing. These are the Melissa and Doug alphabet puzzles that are self-correcting because only the correct letter and picture fits together. So it's easy for the child to tell if they've matched them incorrectly or correctly. These are some of the Lori Photo language cards in a variety of different kinds. I've got the categories, rhyming photo cards, things that go together, and opposites cards. And there's a bunch of different little games that you can play with all of these, which is really fun. This is just a little Easter memory matching game that I have in my language box for teaching the names of the things that are on the backs of the cards, but it's actually a memory game. A little set of alphabet flashcards with pictures and letters on the back. This is just an extra bag of sand for her sand tray for letter writing practice. We've got a set of sandpaper letters, the traditional actual like wooden ones with the sandpaper on them that is for teaching letters and letter sounds, as well as a DIY set that I made from index cards. I just drew the letters on with black permanent marker and covered it with a little bit of glitter glue and they both work equally well in my opinion. A wooden letter trace board where we've got capitals on one side and then on the other side are all the lowercase letters and it comes with a little wooden stylus so that she can actually practice a proper pen pencil grip as she is practicing the formation of the different letters and again she's a little ways out from really using this but i have it on hand for when she's ready various different like little classification card sets that i made for her myself when she was a little bit younger her familiar faces cards which you guys might have seen on my instagram in the past more classification cards um, an activity that was based on letters and letter sounds that came in one of her KiwiCo kits. And this is a set of Montessori language objects. I wanna say there's like a hundred, if I remember correctly, a hundred different items in here, but they're all little miniature versions of real life things. So for example, this tiny little airplane, you can see it's extremely small and it's actually kind of rubbery it makes me wonder if it's an eraser but it's a very tiny little airplane and you can use these little objects in conjunction with the sandpaper letters or with um, actual uh, little picture cards there's a variety of different ways to use these but one of the ways that i'm planning to use them with kylie very soon is with some phonics games that use the sandpaper letters so for example with a plane i might pull out the where is it say oh there it is sandpaper letter for the sound p -p letter p and i might ask her to find the correct beginning sound for the plane so she'll have to sound out p plane and then she would place it on top of the correct sandpaper letter so again there's a lot of different ways to use these that's just one of them um, but i'm excited to introduce these to her because little kids find these tiny little objects so fascinating and they're just so intricate and detailed and for any child who is in a sensitive period for an interest in small objects this is definitely some exciting stuff so these are the math materials that we have right now and it looks like I've got a set of counting cards. We've got different numbers and they're all themed with sea turtles because we used these last week for our reptiles unit study. One of my super old school DIY color sorting activities that I made that 
I have not introduced to Mia yet, but I'm going to. And as you can see, it's kind of filled here, but it's got a whole bunch of different little colored pom-poms. And then each of the holes is colored a different color. I just did it with marker and it's for color sorting. A Melissa and Doug stack and sort board for accounting and color sorting purposes. This is a set of Montessori number rods that I have not introduced to Kylie yet, but I'm actually going to during our current units. So in the very near future a Melissa and Doug number puzzle, a number counting peg box. I don't know what its official name is. I can't remember, but you place the little cards with different numbers on them. Let's see if I can, there you go. So you'd place the number 10 card on the top of the slot, and then the child would place in all the little pegs into the holes. And then when they pull that part, the pegs fall down into the bottom. So it's a little number counting activity that Kylie received as a gift in her Love Every kit. The more traditional version of that activity would be a set of number pegboards. So it's a very similar idea. You've got a whole bunch of little wooden tablets with a single number printed on and then the correct number of holes. And then the child places the little pegs into the holes so they can begin associating the abstract concept of a number symbol with the actual quantity of what it actually means. This is a set of Melissa and Doug stacking and nesting boxes. The Melissa and Doug self-correcting number puzzles. So the number will match with a quantity, some type of picture, and if they aren't the correct match, then the puzzles will not fit together. These are a set of number Play-Doh mats that I just printed out and laminated. This is just a set of colored construction paper, one color for every color that a child learns while they're in preschool. And I just have this set aside as a set for any color sorting activities that we do that require some sort of a mat to lay things on. It's a little number puzzle, physics, little mouse box, Kimiko activity that Kylie had in one of her previous kits. Another Kimiko activity that involved a little bit of counting and numbers and spatial relationships. And the last couple of Ziploc bags that I have down here are a bag of buttons for button sorting, my color, size, you name it. There's a ton of different ways to use a bag of buttons. These are just a set of DIY sandpaper numbers that I created, again, like the letters on index cards with just a little bit of black permanent marker and I put a whole bunch of glitter glue on top to create that uh, sandpapery kind of rough texture. And then I have them stored with a bunch of these little glass gem vase fillers that you can buy at like the dollar store or any craft store. They're really great to use for counters and I keep them together for a Montessori activity called cards and counters. This bag is filled with all kinds of laminated cards for color sorting. So they have different things by different colors and these actually go with this little set of construction paper that I was just showing you guys. This was a printable that I found online called Big, Medium, Small. So it's just a bunch of objects that are in big, medium, and small, and then they sort by size. And then I got two packs of cards. One came in her Love Every kit for helping her learn how to uh, sort and match by shape or color. And then the other one is just a set of dollar store number quantity cards that I really haven't used all that much really at all with her. Um, she played with them a lot, which is why the box is so beat up when she was little, but she doesn't really understand numbers up to that high as you can see yet. So we have I haven't really used these, but I'm holding on to them in the event that maybe I find a use for them in the future. These are the sensorial materials. And this is closely related, if you're new to Montessori, this is closely related to the area of math. It's kind of like the prerequisite understandings required to understand abstract math concepts. Um, so things like sorting by color, shape, size, patterns, um, isolating all the different senses, you know, sight, touch, hearing, smell, all of those things are considered sensorial activities. So this is a Melissa and Doug uh, pattern blocks activity comes with a variety of different wooden tablets and then all these little shapes to create the different patterns that are printed on the board. Like this one is a little geometric fish. These are just a set of really fuzzy extra large pom-poms in various colors. This is colored discs on three dowels. A set of DIY smelling jars that I created. 
a set of DIY sound cylinders and they should all be opaque. You should not be able to see inside of them, but I did take the paper off of some of them when Mia was littler to use as sensory shakers. But this is a set of sound cylinders that I made at home. This is a bag of little different fabric texture squares. The set of peekaboo sound boxes, which are the same idea as the sound cylinders that I just showed you guys. This was a set that was gifted to us a while back and the bottoms of each of these little boxes has a little uh, plastic colored film so that the child can determine whether or not they've made a correct match because the matching sounds will also have matching colors. This is box with bins, which is for helping a child with fine motor skills and opening and closing. And you can hide little things inside the little drawers, but it can also be used for color sorting. Inside this bag, I have a set of Montessori knobbed cylinders, which helps to teach a child visual discrimination by size. So there's actually four different blocks and they all have little knobbed cylinders that fit inside of them. And you can see they're all different sizes and there's a different set for each of the different blocks. So this is a set of peekaboo lock boxes that were also gifted to us by a company called Guidecraft. They're actually the same ones that make the peekaboo sound boxes that I just showed you guys. Um, but they're kind of like a take on the Montessori Imbucari boxes where you're just sorting one shape at a time into the box and the child's retrieving it out. But it's a little bit different from those because they do have different locking mechanisms on the fronts of all the different boxes. And it makes it a little bit different because of that. But this is something that Kylie really enjoyed once she mastered shape sorting, then she was able to move on to learning how to do the different latches. So it's kind of like two activities in one, I guess. This is the mat that I made for beanbag color matching. This is a silhouette matching activity where they have cards with various different objects on them and then they have to find the matching silhouette for that object. These are all of my paint swatches for Montessori color box one, two, and three. And then we have one more bag that has two different sets of dollar store flashcards in them. One is shapes and colors, the other one is just colors. Again, I'm not really using flashcards with the girls like you would normally think people use flashcards. I keep them on hand in the event that I can ever use them as part of another activity, like for matching of any kind or sorting, things like that. Um, but we don't use them very often, but they're here in case I need them. All right, so these are the science, culture, geography materials. I have a beginner's world atlas that I have not shown Kylie yet, but I'm planning to very soon keep this out on our bookshelf. This is a butterfly garden kit that I recently purchased, and I'm still debating whether or not I wanna go ahead and do it before it gets cold where we live, or if I just wanna wait until the springtime, later spring when it's a little bit warmer again. I'm not really sure, but I've got it. Something I've been wanting to do with her for a long time. This is a magnet kit that I've had since I was a science teacher. This is a box that came in one of Kylie's KiwiCo kits that has these little felt matching things. It's like a kind of like a mystery box, mystery bag where they have to feel. It helps them with their stereognostic sense, but it is space themed and it worked on space vocabulary. So I thought this was more science focused. Bird feather. So this is a reptiles themed KiwiCo kit project that Kylie did. Her current one is on rainbows and this was the little uh, book that came with it. But this was the one that goes with the little space box I showed you guys. This is a set of natural gemstones that we got on a little vacation that we took with that has like a little card inside of it for identifying all the different gemstones. These are all of her wild animal figurines that she's collected over the last three years and all of the little matching cards that I've created that go with them. They're all together in one bag. And my girls love these little animal figurines. Like I would say that that's this is probably one of their obsessions in this house are the little figurines, which is why we have quite a few of them. So this was the one that I created for them on pets. These are from Safari LTD, one for flowers, ocean creatures. I think this one is North American wildlife, if I remember correctly, backyard birds, insects, fruits and vegetables, rainforest animals, famous places around the world, like famous landmarks and farm animals. And if you've never seen a set of these before, um, it's just a set of little animal figurines that are all themed. So again, this one was uh, rainforest animals. And what I do is I'll take each individual animal and I will take a picture of that 
figurine on a white background and then I'll add the name of it below and then I'll print them out and laminate them myself so that they last for a really long time no matter how much bending and rough housing they experience um, but they're really great for matching activities for younger children because they are identical and then they're also good later on when your child is learning how to read then you can use them as three-part cards where you actually can cut off like you print two sets and then you cut off the name part and then they match the picture and the name together. So kind of an activity that can grow with your child depending on how you use them. And again, my girls love these little animal figurines and there's just so many of them that you can find. So they're really fun to have. This one is an animal heads and tails matching activity. This is fruit matching uh, for picture to picture matching. I've got some cards that are all related to spring. Then I've got Butterfly Life Cycle. This one has cards by themselves and then also a little booklet that's secured with these little key rings. Um, so the child can learn the cycle and then learn to sequence them independently and kind of use the booklet as a control check. I also have a little booklet that's all about fish and like the different parts of a fish. Same thing, I've got one here for birds. And these were all printables that I found online from a website called Montessori Print Shop. I'll link that down below as well. And then this is a set of reptile uh, three-part cards that we just used last week actually as part of Kylie's homeschool unit. And then over here is a bag of parts of an apple, three-part cards. So as you can see, our box is very heavily science focused right now, and that's just because Kylie is only really just now becoming interested in learning about geography and parts of the world and different cultures and things. So I'm slowly going to be accumulating some more materials related to those topics. And once I do, I would imagine I'm going to need a separate box because the science stuff has kind of taken over this one. So, but that's what we've got as far as the science, culture, and geography goes for the time being. All right, so this is the practical life box and there's quite a bit of stuff in here, but I also wanna point out that a lot of the practical life stuff that you can do around your home is exactly that, it's around your home. So you don't really need a whole lot of practical life stuff to set up on shelves at home because a lot of it can just be done on the job basically. But there are a couple of things that are helpful to have and I've got them all set aside here. They're mostly like little additions to things, but you'll see. So first we've got a set of um, dressing frames. Honestly, I'm not in love with these. They do the job. Um, she's really only ex worked with the zipper, the button, and the snaps successfully thus far. They are a little bit on the flimsy side, in my opinion. I would like the really nice wooden ones, but they're just so expensive. So I opted to get these ones instead at the time that I purchased them. And like I said, they're working, they're doing what they're supposed to, but if you're going to invest in a set of dressing frames and you want them to work well, I would suggest the wooden ones. This is a pretend doctor checkup kit um, that she received as part of one of her KiwiCo kits, which is not necessarily practical life, but I have found it helpful in role playing for when we actually go to the doctor, <laughs> which to me is kind of like practical life. So that's in here. This is a Montessori screwdriver set. This is just some rainbow rice that I made for a rainbow sensory bin, but I keep it now for using for dry pouring exercises because it's just a little bit more fun to look at than plain rice, I guess. A set of water beads, which if you've never tried these things before, they are super cool. You put them in water and they expand to like a gajillion times their size and they're really squishy, but they're really fun for transferring activities in addition to just for sensory play. This is a set of um, Hawaiian lay flower lacing beads, some spare eyedroppers for eyedropper transfer, an old toothbrush for the purposes of scrubbing and painting and anything not related to actually brushing your teeth, some clothes pins in various sizes, two sets of tweezers or tongs. One is the, a set of bamboo tweezers or tongs and then these are just some like little harder sturdier plastic ones but they're both good for different types of transferring activities the melissa and doug lacing bead set melissa and doug farm animal lacing cards 
These are a set of washcloths that I've drawn lines on for uh, the purposes of learning how to fold in different configurations for folding activities. Some artificial flowers for flower arranging in the event that we want to do flower arranging in the dead of winter and don't have fresh flowers on hand. A more advanced locks and keys activity set that has, I wanna say four or five different types of locks and keys all at once. A little set of blunt ended uh, darning or sewing needles for beginning sewing activities and a jar of some all-natural wood polish for polishing activities. So these are the infant toddler materials that we have. Again, these are mostly for the younger age group. I would say under the age of two primarily, possibly up to about two and a half. Um, so these are things that Mia is using right now. Um, we've got just a little drawstring bag from one of her other activities. It holds the pieces for her stacking pegboard from Love Every. This is actually a DIY activity that I made a long time ago for Kylie. And it's just for posting. So you've got the little wooden peg people that you can get like a craft store and they fit perfectly on the top of a milk jug. So they just post them in there. And I think I've got like eight or 10 of them in there. And they're fun to shake around and then they dump them out and start all over again. Another DIY posting activity involving pom-poms. So old puffs container, cut a hole in the lid. They post the pom-poms inside, take off the lid and repeat. This was a crinkle taggy that came in Mia's Kiwico Panda Crate when she was like, I don't know, six months old. This is a set of wooden nuts and bolts for refining wrist motion fine motor skills. This is just an old wipes container that I repurposed for putting silk scarves into, like a tissue box, and then they can just pull out the silk scarves. And then inside I've got a set of these wooden rings that can be used as either teething rings for really young babies, and then they can be repurposed as the baby gets a little bit older and they're ready for stacking activities. You can take this Melissa and Doug rainbow stacker and you can take all these donuts off and because these rings have a bigger hole, it's a lot easier for them to learn that stacking motion and they can stack these onto the stacker instead. And then of course the Melissa and Doug rainbow stacker. This is the Montessori discs on a horizontal dowel activity. Another old school DIY activity. I just took a Tupperware lid and knotted some pieces of ribbon and the baby can pull the little pieces through to each side. And then once they've pulled them all, they can flip it over and they can pull back to the other side all over again. And this is something that endlessly fascinates some younger babies. Another DIY activity that I created when Kylie was really little, it's just an old oatmeal container. I cut some holes in the lid that are the right shape for these large popsicle sticks. And as your child gets older, you can also color code them if you wanted to and turn it into like a little color matching activity to the different colored holes. I never actually did that, but definitely something you could try. This is a classic Montessori object permanence box where the baby just takes the ball, places it into the hole, disappears for a second, and then it rolls back out into the tray and then they can repeat it endlessly until they master this idea that things that are out of their sight aren't necessarily gone forever. This little baggie has more little baggies and boxes on the inside for an opening and closing activity. Love this little snapping old school coin purse. This one is a DIY version of shaker and sticks with just some uh, cake pop sticks. And then I took a mason jar and put some cardboard on the top and taped it down real securely. And voila, shaker and sticks. These are just some of the little guides that come inside of the Love Every kits and some play ideas cards that come in the KiwiCo Panda Crate kits. This little box with a tiny little mouse in an organic sleep sack and this little mirror came in Mia's Love Every kit. This little baggie contained a set of wooden Montessori baby toys. So there was a set of grasping beads, a wooden teething ring, some interlocking discs, and a wooden baby rattle. Unfortunately, I don't think this particular set is sold on Amazon anymore. I'm not sure exactly why, but I haven't been able to find it. Um, but you can find similar items to it on Etsy. I've seen a whole bunch of really gorgeous ones there. This is a gorgeous wood and silk teether from Sarah Silks. It's just a wooden teething ring and it has this really super soft, gorgeously colored um, mini scarf tied around it. 
This was a DIY hand kite that I created when Kylie was little, just with some random ribbons that I happened to have laying around and a little teething ring. A large wooden egg that I picked up at a craft store that I actually used to use as an egg and cup activity with this cup that I had at the time that I don't have anymore. Um, but the actual version of that activity that I now own is this right here, which is called egg and cup. And it's literally just a little wooden egg and it fits perfectly inside of this little cup. It's like a little 3D puzzle. And along with egg and cup is peg and cup, which is a similar idea. It's just a little bit more difficult because the width of this little cup is smaller. So it has to be more of an accurate, exact fit as the baby learns to place it in there an oval shaped bell cylinder, and then a round one that actually rolls across the floor. A set of black and white interlocking discs that came in Mia's KiwiCo Panda Crate. A wood and silicone bead teething ring that also came in the same Panda Crate. A DIY rough and smooth board for babies, I guess. I used to give this to Kylie when she was really little, but just kind of gives them different textures to feel and gives them a beginning of understanding of the difference between what something that's rough feels like versus something that's smooth. But it's literally just a block of wood that has sandpaper glued to one half of it. A Montessori tactile mobile. This is the ring on an elastic cord. So I just have it all wrapped up right now just so that it's not loose in the box, but but basically it just hangs from the ceiling. You put the little screw into the ceiling and then I've got a little key ring and then the big long cord and then the ring is at the bottom for the baby to tug on and bring to their mouth and bat all over the place. So Montessori tactile mobile. These are just a couple of old CDs that I saved that I actually used to use with the Melissa and Doug Rainbow Stacker. Again, I would just take all the donuts off and Kylie would thread the CDs onto the peg. And that was just like a variation on the activity that she really seemed to enjoy. This is a fuzzy bug shrub. It's just these little Velcro bugs that are inside of this part right here. This came inside of Mia's Love Every Kit. And then right here is just a row of DIY sensory bottles. So this one just has a bead necklace inside of it. So for shaking, this one has some rice and a couple of those little blue wooden vase filler gems that I showed you earlier. So just for rolling and turning and for listening to. These three are filled with water. So this one just has like a random collection of arts and crafts, googly eyes and pom poms and beads and things that are fun to look at and shake up. Little winter snowflake confettis and more of those blue vase filler gem things. And this one is filled with birthday confetti and glitter, so it moves a lot slower than the other ones. And finally, the puzzles box. Again, some of these could probably go in some of the other crates, the other boxes, based on the topic of it. Um, but I just thought it was easier since they're so bulky to just give puzzles their own bins. So we've got all kinds of puzzles in here. This one is the 12 piece. Um, it comes with four of them, but it's 12 pieces each of the different um, wild animals. A small peg transportation puzzle. A large knobbed three circle puzzle. Another jigsaw puzzle box that has four different 12 piece puzzles in it, except this one is different types of vehicles. A set of farm animal two piece puzzles. A ballerina themed jumbo 25 piece floor puzzle. A small peg farm animal sound puzzle. A chunky pho puzzle. A couple of small knobbed Christmas theme puzzles. A layered puzzle, which is like a puzzle that has literally different layers on the inside of it and the puzzles get bigger. And this one is on the frog life cycle. A fun geometric puzzle that came in Kylie's Love Every Kit. A large knobbed shape puzzle that has five different shapes. And a large knobbed shape puzzle that has three different shapes. This was a small chunky puzzle with different shapes that I got at the dollar store. A set of Matryoshka nesting dolls. A Melissa and Doug latch board that has different little doors and opening and closing mechanisms on it. And a 24 piece wooden jigsaw puzzle of ocean creatures. 
So the only items that you guys haven't seen yet because they're not stored in these bins is a set of Montessori visual mobiles that I created with my husband's help here at home when my daughter Mia was born. And I only got around to making the first three. There's actually four in the series. Um, but by the time that she was ready for the fourth one, I was just not ready to make it. So we never got around to it. But when I created them, I also concurrently made DIY tutorial videos on how to make each of the mobiles. So if you are interested in creating your own gorgeous Montessori mobiles for your newborn, then you can follow along with my video tutorials and create some of them for yourself. And the other item that you haven't seen is something that I've ordered and it just hasn't arrived here yet because it's on a bit of a back order. It is something that I'm going to be introducing to my oldest as part of her homeschool preschool curriculum and that is a traditional Montessori pink tower. And that is a much larger item anyway. It would not fit inside of one of these boxes regardless. But when we do get it, I will be sure to share it with you guys in a future video because it really is a quintessential, gorgeous Montessori material. I hope that you were able to find some ideas and inspiration out of what I showed you for some activities that you might want to try with your child at home. And I do want to reiterate just one more time that these materials cover a three year time span. So some of the things that I showed you might not necessarily be appropriate for your child right now based on their current age and abilities. So do a little bit of research first, ask some questions in your community just to find out before you introduce it to your child. This way you're not also introducing some unnecessary frustration if it's something that is potentially too challenging at the given time. If you are interested in learning more about how to implement Montessori practices at home with your children, I also offer a comprehensive e-course that walks you through it step by step. So I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box down below, just in case you're interested in learning more about that. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori practices at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.